I'm being robbed of strength. If I feel weak spiritually, I feel weak physically. I feel weak mentally. I feel weak emotionally. And so in our studies with, in our relationship findings, we understand that God's saying, even remember, we went all the way back to Adam where God said, yeah, it's me and you, Adam. And that's great and all, and I've given you dominion over all of this, but I'm not enough for you. You need to help me. Think how important, again, God placed the importance and the value upon relationship. So welcome to those of you joining us online tonight. We're going to start here in chapter 10. Now that's page 115 if you have the book. And relationship lessons we can learn from Paul. Now the Apostle Paul is probably my favorite. Uh, King David as well just because I can relate to him. How many of you can relate to King David? When you're on, you're on. When you're off, boy, we're off. So I can relate to him. I can relate to Peter a little bit, wanting to cut people's ears off at times. <laughs> you know, we all have a little bit of, of, of of some of that in us. And I think in it, Paul, you know, to me being one of the greatest uh, penmen and, and uh, apostles, I, I just, I admire his life and the change that he had. But, you know, what's the Bible say? To whom much is forgiven, much is required. And he had much forgiven. Remember, he persecuted Christians. He killed Christians. Yeah, on behalf of God. And so he understood, man, I've been forgiven a lot and I have a lot to do. And so I admire his life. So we're going to look into that tonight. But before we do, let's just open in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you that our hearts are open. It's been a busy day, Lord. I'm sure it's been a busy day for, for everyone in here, for those joining us online. But right now, we've set this time aside. For this purpose. And we thank you, Lord, that our hearts are open, our minds are receptive to hear what your Holy Spirit wants to speak to us tonight. Not to our heads, but to our spirits. We thank you for that being spoken. And Lord, that it creates a change within us. In Jesus' name. We all said, Amen. 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 In the previous chapters, we've examined the elements of healthy relationships. The marriage relationship, we talked about that. The relationship we have uh, with others, with our relatives. We've studied the covenant relationship that Abraham had with God. And we studied the value of having godly friends, looking in some detail at the friendship of David and Jonathan. Now let's look at the Apostle Paul's life and learn from the relationships he maintained. The Apostle Paul, underline this, accomplished more for the cause of Christ than any other person in his lifetime. Think about that. <laughs> than any other person in his lifetime. Who else was in his lifetime? Peter? John? Peter, whose shadow would, would heal people? And Paul did more than all of these. And he didn't try to be a lone ranger. He concentrated on building relationships. He often submitted himself in relationship with his peers in ministry, and he always had a team or partner traveling with him. Being part of a team, having a base of support, is invaluable to any endeavor. Underline this. No one can be successful in this life as a lone ranger. Just put, I am not a lone ranger, if you're writing notes down. I am not a lone ranger. God created me to be in relationship with others. We were not created to do it all ourselves. Now, we how many of you struggle with that at times? I've been there too. I, I can do it. I'll do it. I'll get it done. But you know, God placed other people around us to help with that. What's the word say? You have not because you ask not. When this whole sound project started, I didn't, I mean, this is not what I went to Bible school for. We've talked about this before. So it's a huge learning curve for me. And I struggled with it for how many months? So oh, probably six three. months, three, six months, somewhere in there. Three? Yeah. And, and about two weeks, I was doing everything I could. How many of you have been there? You're doing everything you could do. And you just come to a place and just stop. And uh, 
I just began to grow frustrated with it. And, and, and isn't that the devil, something that's supposed to be a blessing? Turns into a frustration. Uh -huh. To do what? To get you to quit? I'm not doing that. Forget it. I don't have time for that. Well, I don't know, but what are we supposed to do? Holy Spirit, I need help. And what did he do? He said, you need to talk the same. Now, I'm thinking, about what? What am I supposed to talk to Sam about? I don't even know Sam. Right? I mean, didn't really know you. Just go talk to Sam and tell him you need his help. So go to another guy and tell another guy that I don't know that I need his help. Yep. And when I went and did that, it was on a Wednesday night. I remember saying to him, I need to talk to you. Mary Lou was there. And, and I, I, I said what was on my heart. And, and he was, tears were, were filling his eyes as I was talking. He said, the Holy Spirit talked to me two weeks ago about that. I've been waiting for you to come here. And, and the friendship that we have uh, developed and, and the relationship we've developed out of that and the amazing abilities that he has. I'm, I'm just bragging on him because I've spent, I'm sure you all have them. That's my point. All of the things that God has placed within you and the gifts and talents and abilities that are within this body that are lying here dormant in some ways. Now, I would say, don't wait for me to ask. But out of it, that's the, the Holy Spirit was working something out of me, too. I need to learn how to ask for help and ask for help more. So I think in it, sometimes we, we don't understand that there's no lone ranger. Like if it were up to me, we'd, we'd probably still be sitting where we were. Because there were things, how many of you know things about electricity and how thick a wire needs to be? Not me. One other person. How I many of you know how to make Cat 6 network cable by hand? Look at that. One, two, did you know that? Look, raise your hands up again there. Take pictures, Miss Amy. Let me keep asking some questions, Ashley. You got note, you got your notepad there. I'm just gonna shift gears for a minute here. There we go. See, now, now raise it seriously. I'm not trying to... Raise your hand up again if you can make Cat 6 cable by hand. One, two, three, four. I only knew of one person until we just asked that question that could do that. How many of you know we needed that done? Now, what I'm saying by that is not your fault that you didn't help. I'm not saying that. I'm saying without us knowing... Here's the need. Now, did I say, hey, we need cat six cables made? No, because Sam was making them. But if I knew there were four other people, three other people in here, I could say, hey, Sam, you go work on this stuff that only you can do. And then those who can make these cables, then, well, then they can do that. See, that's all of us joining together and those yeah. relationships being developed. And out of it, what happens? You start talking about life. Yeah. You start talking about God. You start talking about your kids. They've given me some great advice on my own kids. How many of you have had some of your elders who have given you good advice and said, I've been here before. This is what you need to know. Uh -huh. Now it's up to us whether we take that or leave it. But that's in the relationship. Now, we had to have an electrician run power and, and run new work. We had to have people who had skill with uh, woodworking build the booth. We still have lots of work left to do. There's still a lot of things left to do. And, and you may say, you know what? I've been sitting watching and I can do that stuff. Well, we need you. Not just here. Not just in this area. This is We're wrapping this up, thank God. But we, there's plenty of other things that we're moving into. We've got seven acres out there with two guys. Two guys. Flower beds galore. Well, I love flowers. Well, we need you. Because that's not everybody's gifting. And it's not everybody's ability. And in it, well, I don't have any friends. Well, guess what? You'll make friends Amen. when you begin to connect to the vision. Yeah. These relationships are important. We're not lone wolves. 
goes on to say this, we need each other in the support that comes from strong relationships. William Carey of England knew the value, I'm on page 116, knew the value of strong relationships. He knew the importance of having friends who would support him in his endeavors. Carey was ordained in August of 1786. During a minister's meeting that year, Carey suggested that Jesus' command to his disciples to teach all nations was still in effect. Mr. Ryland, the meeting chairman, rebuked him and accused him of being an enthusiast. I could hear it now. You, sir, are an enthusiast. <laughs> that was my closest. <laughs> Kerry was greatly embarrassed. His fellow ministers treated his ideas as impractical. That we weren't supposed to keep teaching people about Jesus? What? But the same year he met someone else, Thomas Potts, who had been in America, seen the need for missionary work and supported Carey in his vision. Carey began to realize that his dreams would never be fulfilled if he worked on his own. In time, God brought other people who encouraged and helped him. One day in 1793, Carey and some friends were discussing the need for foreign missions. Andrew Fuller, a fellow minister who was at the gathering, recalled, we saw there was a gold, mine in, a gold mine in India, but it was as deep as the center of the earth. What's he saying? There's people galore. Can't even reach them all. Fuller asked who would venture to explore that mine. Carey spoke up and addressed his friends. I will venture to go down, but remember that you must hold the ropes. Think about that. By holding the ropes, Kerry meant consistently praying for him, financially supporting him, and regularly communicating on his behalf with the churches in England. His friends agreed. Kerry went to India and made possible the translation of the Bible into numerous languages. As a direct consequence of Kerry's work, the first evangelical missions agency was created in 1792. That was only six years later. Many had called Carey the father of modern missions, but he saw his relationships with his supporters in England as a brotherhood. He traveled to India, underline this, but he knew he was only able to accomplish what he did because of his partners back in England who were holding the rope. You see, it's important to have strong relationships and godly friendships. It's important to have someone hold the rope for you. Now, how many would say you've had that person in your life? I've had someone holding the rope for me, supporting me. When I wasn't at my best, they still believed in me. They still encouraged me. They still spoke good things over me. They didn't give up on me. That's holding the rope. Now, how many of you are holding the rope for somebody? Maybe there's someone in your life that you're holding and supporting and praying over and speaking things over and maybe you're not seeing a result maybe they're not producing anything but what is our job to continue praying and speaking and believing why because that's what faith is it's speaking what we don't have but what we're believing God for hallelujah that's important for us as believers to continue to speak faith out of our mouth he goes on to say this Others held the rope for Paul. This account reminds me of the time the Apostle Paul was let down over the city walls in a basket by believers who he had a relationship with. Paul had friends who helped him in ministry on several occasions. On one such occasion, his friends actually saved his life by holding a literal rope. Let's take a look, take a look at Acts 9, 22 tonight. Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. 23. After many days had gone by, there were, there were a conspiracy among the Jews to do what? Kill him. How the turntables have turned. <laughs> Paul, who was persecuting, right? Now he's being threatened with his life. He goes on to say this in 24. But Saul learned of their plan day and night. They kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. 
But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. What if they weren't there? What if you weren't here? Well, it doesn't matter if I'm here or not. It absolutely matters if you're here or not. Did you know that we're supposed to bring the supply that we have with us into this storehouse? Mm -hmm. Not just our finances. I'm talking about our spiritual supply. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. We're supposed to bring that supply everywhere we go and be full and ready to share. But sometimes we, we may struggle in that. If it hadn't been for Paul's friends holding the rope, he wouldn't have lived to accomplish all that he did for God. Relationships are important. It's tough to go through something by yourself. But when you know someone's holding the rope for you and supporting you, the tough times are a little easier to handle. Underline this. It's easier to tackle a problem when you know you're not alone. Now, I put a scripture reference in Ecclesiastes 4.12. I think I did. Maybe I just notated it. If I didn't, can we look that up? It may take him a second. Ecclesiastes 4.12. Yeah, that's great. I think we ended on it last week. We talked about it right before we left. 4.12, yeah. Ecclesiastes 4.12. I'm preparing, as he's getting that ready, my daughter's getting married in June. Doesn't seem possible. And uh, this is one of the scripture references that I put in her wedding. And in it, it, it gives us a good picture of, of the strength of not just one person, but three people. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Who's that third person? Yeah, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all of them involved in our life that we're, we're a triple braided cord not easily broken. And that's what comes when we have friendships with one another. It's easy to be discouraged and, and, and just give up when it's just you. Have you ever been in a place like that, a season that you may have been in in your life where there wasn't anyone but you? And you remember the loneliness of that and the weight that the devil tries to pile on and keep you or keep me from talking to somebody else because he doesn't want those relationships being strengthened and us being encouraged. Someone said not to me to me not so long ago something that they had been struggling in an area and they had been doing really, really well in it and then they, they, they had a struggle. Okay. Do, do, do you want to keep doing that? Did you enjoy it? Mm -hmm. Okay. How long didn't you do that? They told me how long. All right. Well, in comparison, that's pretty good. Considering this amount of time went by, long period, long, long period, thousand, thousand, thousand plus days. So what's one? So what's the devil? You're over. That's it. That's over. You messed up. And without a friend there to encourage you and remind you and say, yeah, well, it's all right. Did you, did you, did you repent? Yeah. You, you're going to keep, no, I'm not, no. It just proved all the more. Okay, good, then. Onward and upward. How many of you would appreciate that comment if that were you? But see, what if nobody's there to tell us that? Then the devil just beating us down, making us feel about this big. And, and before we know it, we are completely isolated and alone, which is exactly what he wants us to be, where he can flood our minds with anxiety and fear and overwhelm us with all the what-ifs and could-bes and maybe-sos. But the Word of God says what? That we're to think on things that are pure and lovely and good. And when those things come, if we can't get there on our own, hey, I need some help. I need you to pray with me. I'm struggling. We don't have to give all the details. And if it's a good friend, they won't even ask. You got it. Whatever you need, I'm praying right now in the spirit because that's the perfect prayer for you anyway. 
So we can't go wrong in that. But what's the devil? No, shh, don't tell anybody that because they're going to think less of you. Then they won't want to be in relationship with you anymore because you will have failed them. I mean, look. The Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But if he wasn't following Christ, would he encourage you to follow him? So it's the same thing. Sometimes in our relationship with one another, well, I'm following them because they're following Jesus. But boy, when they miss it, I'm done. They're done. I'm done with them. Done with Jesus. They just proved this stuff. Well, who are we serving? We're not serving each other in that way in the sense that we're trying to please each other with our good deeds. And we're, we're serving the Lord. We're not each other's judge. I bet you we all missed it today somehow, somewhere. Every one of us. And guess who put the degrees on it? Now, the Bible does list sins that will send us to hell. Okay? But if, if we're missing it, we're missing it. But if we're swinging for it, guess what? There's going to be times we miss it. Do you ever see anybody bat perfect, a perfect season, home run every time they get up to bat? Boom, home run. Year after year after home run, home run, home run. Home. No, because they're human. They can be the best hit. Injury, I'm out for a season. Stats go down. Fan base goes down. See, again, we can't be fans of our friends. We have to be friends to our friends. Fans are around till it's not working out so much. Man, this game, this is a blowout. I'm out of here. It's only the third quarter. I'm still out of here. I mean, it's, it's done. This game's over. But a, a true follower will be in that seat. You can do it. You can do it. Even when you may be not doing it. I think in it, I, that encouragement to me has got me through a lot. I don't know about you, but there, there are those times where somebody has said one sentence to me that has, has helped me tremendously. And I had someone tell me not too long ago, you know, that person may need some, 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 uh, some input, but I don't think you're going to be able to be the person to, to help them see that. We're in a relationship, right? I should be able to say, you know, maybe, you know, depends sometimes on the day. And in it, it taught me something and it freed me. It actually freed me from the burden of feeling like I was responsible for this person in that way. Because I, I, I tried. How many of you had people in your life like that? You've spoken truth to them. You've spoken truth to them. Spoken truth to them and they just, they bat it down. And you just feel like, what's it going to take for you to get this? And you've loved them and you've, you've put up with some nonsense from them. If we're being honest. Yeah. Well then, bless God. Done with you. <laughs> what are we supposed to do? That's where prayer comes in. And, you know, there may be a time where where you're not the person. Maybe maybe there's someone else that God is has holding the ropes for them, so to speak, that need to speak into their life. And so as we study this out, it's important to understand these friendships that we have. Sometimes I think we, we may be so settled into the friend group we already have, we're not looking for new ones. And we may be ostracizing people from the body or from different areas of ministry or different areas that they may want to get involved in because they don't feel comfortable because there's no relationship. We can't stay. Every year we go to this pastor's conference and every year they tell us the same thing. You can sit with the people you're sitting with right now, but that's the last time you sit with them this whole conference. You should be sitting with someone different every service. And most people don't care for that. Just because you're, from, you're peer groups. You're, but you know what? We met some great people this year. We've been for years and years that we had never met before. And so in it, 
Who knows what that will turn into? Who knows what that friendship could develop into? But I know this, that it wasn't by accident. But are we looking for new friends? Or I'm good, the ones I got are enough. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Page 118. Paul and Barnabas. Paul's life gives us insight in the importance of relationships. Did we already start there? Okay. Paul himself recognized the value of relationships and he concentrated on building relationships. The story of Paul and Barnabas gives us another good Bible example of a godly relationship. After his conversion, Paul returned to Jerusalem only to be shunned and rejected. The Christians didn't accept him because they didn't trust him. Well, understandably so. He was the one who had been previously been putting them to death. So it's obvious that he's going to be a little leery of this guy. But one day a man named Barnabas befriended Paul. Paul took him in and personally escorted him to Peter, James, and the other elders. So he hooked him up with some people who were solid. Don't take your new Christian friends to people who aren't solid. Come on now. Find elders, find people in the church who you know, people who are solid, people who can give good counsel because how many of you know sometimes somebody was taught something and they just believed that without even knowing if it was true or not. And they pass that mistruth or that it's, they're not trying to lie, but it, that is what it ends up being to someone else who, and generationally there's that lie that's sold. Until a friend says, hey, no. No, no, no. You need to meet this guy and you need to see he's legit. He's who he says he is. Let me not just meet you. I'll take you to some friends of mine and get you connected with some people who can then vouch for you and they have some weight behind their, their name, so to speak. Barnabas had a knack for seeing both the need and the potential of the people he met. He saw Paul's potential, not his past. That's important. Paul was grateful to him for that. In time, Paul chose Barnabas to become his close friend and also his ministry partner. Together, they traveled far and wide preaching the gospel. This is important. Barnabas didn't even mind when Paul surpassed him and became his leader because Barnabas continued to support Paul for the sake of the gospel. Even though Barnabas had been the one who had brought Paul in and introduced him to all the elders of the church, Paul eventually became the one in charge. But to Barnabas, underline this, who was in charge wasn't important. <laughs> I love that. What mattered was the relationship and their ability to do great things together for God. Being overly concerned about who's in charge is one thing that hinders many people in churches from reaching their potential in God's kingdom and in the local community. In many churches, businesses, and organizations, much more could be accomplished if people would stop worrying about who was going to get the credit. Amen. Amen. Well, we can stop there tonight. There's, there, there's been a lot that we've heard. You know, to know this, that there may be a relationship divinely appointed for you and your future. God is speaking into your spirit right now through his Holy Spirit, speaking things to you that he would have you to do or people he would have you to, to approach and to speak with or to develop relationships with that could change your life and change theirs. Change the course of your history. and Look at missions. Look at what came from meeting one person. Meeting one person who was like-minded. Now, he wasn't going out looking anywhere and everywhere for people just to support him. He was looking for people to support the, the mission and the vision that God had given him. There's a difference, because there will be people who may support you until you do something they don't like. You know, they'll support you until... <coughs> they feel as if you made a poor decision. 
And the truth is, ultimately, who do we have to answer to for all of our decisions? God. First and foremost. But sometimes we spend so much time in our relationship analyzing everyone else and their problems that we've forgotten how to be a friend. Being a friend isn't about telling the other person all the things that they need to change and fix. I think sometimes as believers, we've, we've taken hold of that and ran with it a little far. Because if it's not Holy Spirit led, it's not effective anyway. We have to be very careful how we approach people. If we're approaching people out of a, a, a motive of love and wanting to build them up and encourage them, we can never do the wrong thing in that. But if we're trying to offer them counsel because we see they're struggling in areas when we got a plank in our own eye. You know, I've said it before, there's enough in my backyard, so to speak, to keep me busy till Jesus comes. With me. I don't need to be in your backyard too. And so out of it, sometimes that will ostracize us from people. You know, if you want a friend, you have to be a friend. Bless God, they have them come talk to me if they want to be my friend. <laughs> well, you're going to sit there a while. Maybe a long while. So tonight as we study that out, I just encourage you to finish the chapter. You know, we were a few pages shy of it, but finish the chapter. And, and we'll close in prayer here and then have a few moments. But I think it's important as we're looking at our relationships right now, this just translates to our spouse. I think we it starts there. You know, obviously after our, our relationship with God, but we need to, our earthly relationships, with our spouse, our children, mm -hmm. our families, how are we interacting with them? Because if we're not doing it well there, we can't do it well outside of the house. So let's just close in prayer tonight, and then we'll, we'll chat about that for a minute. Father, we just thank you for those joining us online, those here, Lord, I thank you for just an ever-growing group. And I thank you that we're not just growing in number, but growing uh, spiritually as well. Thank you for this truth tonight. Thank you for friends, Lord, divine appointments, people you've placed in our path, people we may not even have met yet that we may meet tomorrow. Father, we thank you for, for those appointments, Lord, that we see them and that we respond to them, that we are looking for ways to be a friend. Father, we thank you that we evaluate our relationships accurately with you, first and foremost, and then with our spouses and our children and with our families. Lord, that we would make some shifts to get some things in play. Lord, that we would begin to look at them through the eyes of love instead of the eyes of judgment. Father, help us not to be focused on other people's shortcomings when we have enough of our own to deal with. We thank you that your grace and your mercy covers Lord, even our intentional sin at times, Father, and, and, and keeps us from things that we should that we should have, Lord, that we, we deserve, but your grace covers it. We thank you for that tonight, Lord. We ask that your, your, your love for one another, your love, Father, for you would grow, our love for you would grow into a level it hasn't before. And we thank you we see results we haven't seen before in Jesus' name. We all say Amen. 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 Well, as we take a minute here, anyone have any?